Everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Muddy Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. I am your host, Josh Muddy. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army, army veteran. I'd like to introduce you to my co host. He's a Christian, devoted husband, and father. What's up, Jason? How's it going, bro? Oh, what's up, man? How you doing? How's everything going? What's up, Nathan? How's everything going with you? It's going awesome. How are you guys doing? <laughs> We're doing amazing. I'm doing amazing, man. I'm uh, yeah, super, yeah. super stoked. I'm super happy. Uh, kind of been doing a lot of shows lately and knocking them out. And uh, all right. So today we have a very special guest for you. Returning guest, uh, Mount Crushmore. Everybody loved when he was on the show last time. Last time we kind of went over your childhood, your your the military stuff. We can kind of get into whatever you want to get into, man. I don't, I don't know what you wanted to go over tonight, but anything you want to go into, the floor is open for you, bro. Oh, thank you so much, man. I, I so appreciate it. You know, I just, I, first of all, I just want to say how much I am appreciative of the work that you guys are doing, you know, like it, just, just to be super transparent, it's, it's guys like you that have been forerunners for, for so many others. I mean, let's just be transparent about it. You know, there's been a lot of other people that were imperative for us to learn the information that we've come to today to get to a place where we got freed from the mental traps that have been laid for us for generations. You know, we're trying to pick our way through the pieces of a minefield that's been systemically built up for generations to lead us astray, to lead us from ever coming to grips with an understanding of what is the reality of the world that we live in. What is literally, what is the, this world that we live in and how do we get out of this pit that we've all been dumped into, you know, and it's really, it was the formative things that took place in my life that helped to wrestle me out of that was bold and courageous men, men of zealousness, like people that were absolutely all in dedicated to the truth and were not going to be moved, dissuaded or persuaded away from it. You know, men of convictions truly is like, it is the rarest commodity in the earth today is men and women who stand up with boldness and with tenacity and with the ability to clearly articulate their position to be able to contend against this world of lies. You know, I needed that in my life before I ever had maybe a shared conviction, a shared courage. I borrowed their courage, you know, to help me overcome a lot of the systemic evil that had been perpetrated on me for many years of my life. But it's really because just like, you know, my slavery that I experienced as I was young did it in a sense, part of it ended, but the mental slavery from the state of the environment that I'd been conditioned in through compulsory public education and through school and herd mentality had so deeply entrenched me in the fear of what other people thought of me too, that I never was willing to kind of break out of it. But seeing people that were willing to stand as the outcast, the outlier, the lunatic, I mean, for lack of a better word, to be mocked and derided in every form and facet that could be conceived of by others is what it took for me to be able to see it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it because it's, if we are willing to suffer the mockery of men, you know, like I was just reading earlier tonight, like the book of Matthew, man. And he's literally saying that do not fear. This is chapter 10. Therefore do not fear them. You know, it is enough for the taught one to become like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for whatever is covered shall be revealed, and whatever is hidden shall be made known. What I say to you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. Do not fear those who can kill the body but are unable to kill the being, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and being in Gehenna, in hell. That's, that's the reality of why we must stand up here and proclaim these truths that we have found and why we need to seek with everything in us to try to inspire another generation and others to pick up and run with this. That's, this is the goal, that they would make disciples who make disciples. we got to replicate ourselves fundamentally. Bro, the, the crazy thing is, Nathan, the first verse I had to go over for this show is, uh, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. I had the same verse, bro, like ready to go in the, in the, uh, in the, in the round, you know, ready to go just in case we went over something. And that's cool that you were, you just came off right off with that verse. That is, that's awesome. I love it. That's awesome. That I was re that's I was reading the same exact thing. Matthew ten. I have twenty seven through twenty eight. You had it. You, you went a little further back. So that's interesting, man. I like that. God is great. See, he's working. That's right. that's <laughs> he's right. working. But dude, honestly, all glory to God uh, for even putting us in this position. Any of us, all three of us, you know, for God mm -hmm. to even 
put us to trust us uh, to be a vessel that he can use and to speak on any platform. Um, all glory to God. He's um, he's putting us in this position and it's up to us to stand bold in the truth, no matter what persecution, no matter if people think I'm a village idiot, I don't even care. I'm just going to keep going, doing my thing and and speaking what I believe is the truth. And we're going to stand and proclaim it from the rooftops and scream it. So no matter if anybody gets upset about it or not, or whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, to be honest, we're, um, we're here to fight for God. We're here to fight for the word of God and show people that the absolute truth is the Bible. And, and that's it. That's our foundation. And nobody is going to be able to move that because the Bible never changes. Uh, it's everlasting. It's for everybody, for every generation. It's not for people 3000 years ago or way back in the day. This is for every single person and it is here for us, you know? So uh, it's amazing, man. God is just amazing. And, and he's uh, anything that's happening that, that maybe people feel if we're moving, it's really him moving through us and that's it. And, and that's all we're, we're allowing him to just, you know, use us as vessels and and you too, Nathan, same thing, man. Thank you for everything you're doing coming out, bro. Speaking about the stuff that you've been through and your book and everything and all the stuff you've been through in your life and being able to come and speak about it and having the courage to explain this type of stuff that some people would might think, you know, Nathan, there's, uh, there's no way that happened or whatever. Maybe they would try to say something like that or all the stuff that you've been through for you to come and just like stand firm and ready to fight against the devil and, and all the stuff that, and all the people that have done this stuff in the past to you. I mean, that takes a lot of courage and for you to just be bold and it's the same thing, you know, it's, a, but we're not on the same level as you because you've been through some, some crazy stuff. We're just trying, you know, you, you, you're talking like that's real courage, man, to be able to go through that, you know? So it's amazing, man. And, and Jason, also, I want to say to you, Jason, thank you for everything you do, man. And thank you for always being there with the, with the, for, for the show and everything. I know that's, it's, it's hard, but I just want to let you know, because, you know, I know you've been working a lot. It's, it's not, you know, <clears throat> I'm trying to, you know, does it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I just love having you on the show. And I, and I think you do an amazing job. I think you might be muted. <laughs> yeah, you're muted. Hey, I'll see technical difficulties, man. It's all right. It's not, right. <laughs> I'm not a button pusher. <laughs> yeah, nah, but yeah. It's, it's all good, bro. It's not, it's, not, it's not a big deal. It's just something to do. Something to, it's it's a good it's a good uh it's a good pastime now. It's a good a uh, it's a good hobby to have to 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 have a platform to speak about it because that's mainly all we can do now is just talk on something. You can't can't really, you know, pull out a a gun or something and go crazy on anybody around this stuff so you just gotta you just gotta push the word <laughs> things that are going on in this world you really can't you can't can't be a vigilante and go out there and just wipe out half half of uh god's Evil. enemies by yourself so you gotta wait it out <laughs> i know Use the word of god man you, you, i know it sucks yeah. out there and just let you know you can't do that you just gotta <laughs> you just gotta use the word you gotta stick to the word and you gotta you gotta and Josh, correct you, the Bible does change. The message doesn't. They've been changing this Bible a lot lately. So I've been noticing that a lot. Like people's versions of the Bible, stuff like it's just what we have is the weird. We have like we have tools though, like the where we could go back to the strong concordance. And that's why it's it's good. Jason, you're right. They're they are change they are sometimes they're doing like a compromise with some of the newer translations, but we have the the tools now where we have like the blue letter bible or we have bible apps where we have every single version of every single bible and it's good to kind of go to through different ones and actually compare different words and study to to show thyself approved in certain ways which i know you do that jason i'm just well, talking no, I'm to the audience. It's, it's more like uh it's more like uh uh they try god god uh anticipated this so he kind of keeps the message that you could tear a page out of the bible even two or three, but the message never changes, you know. So it's yeah. it's 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 okay. You do whatever you want. You, you, I just encourage it. guys, anybody that's out there, uh, uh, to make sure that you are studying different. You know, like there's a King James version. Yes, you can go to the Geneva. You can go like the. You can just check different versions of the Bible and different words. Find out what they mean because, like uh, Jason was talking about, they do 
compromise for science in some ways, or they compromise in certain ways where it might change the the whole meaning of it. And then when you go and look at the Strong's Concordance, you see that I don't think they should, you, you could even say like, I don't think they probably should have used that word. They should have used this one. So, but anyways, but yeah, Nathan, like we said, man, you're doing powerful things with your show, the podcast and jumping on like Emma's show and, and um, that, that being in those type of round tables with, you know, four people talking about everything they went through and, and, and being able to uh, speak is a lot of courage, brother. Yeah, man. You just, just to kind of hit that point on the head too, about the word, you know, like I, I found so much comfort in studying the scriptures in a like textual criticism, you know, it's like going back to the original manuscripts and going back to the original languages is such, is such a meaty and and mighty endeavor that anyone can undertake in their life is to be able to know what the word says for themselves. Like you said, that, that verse, you know, study to show yourselves approved, like being able to, to rightly handle the word of truth is like an imperative command that we're given. You and I were talking a little bit about our experiences in the military and like how long that you spend in training, basic combat training, you know, before you're handed a weapon and then how much longer you're until you're handed ammunition for that weapon. And then how, until you're actually on a firing line, getting to use that weapon. And then how much time they spend training you with a basic battery of arms to shoot, show proficiency. Like I slept with my rifle for weeks before I fired around through it. You know what I mean? Like I literally had to show I was capable of physically handling the thing, practicing clearing it safely before I went into a building, practicing loading, like all of these maneuvers that were just hardwired, impressed into me over and over and over. And I mean, I'm talking to like the military is absolute experts at trauma-based mind control. They have patented it. You know, they have they have taken a form of of shattering the individual to, to destroy them, program in a completely different set of instructions to turn them into a collectivist thing, like known as a soldier, you know, like this is, this is a requirement. But then as you go through these scriptures, like he's telling you, he's giving you commands and marching orders as if you are a soldier in his army. Like you're reporting to the commander, the captain of the heavenly host here. And he was like, literally like, don't even concern yourself with the worldly matters. Like a soldier shouldn't concern himself with the ways of the world. You know, those same concerns on your mind, that when you're in a combat scenario shouldn't even be on the, the, the last thing on your mind, eating up those mental resources. But being able to be proficient with the word is like should be your basic training, like should be the fundamentals of which you devote yourself to. Because at the end of the day, the things, the catalyst that that sowed the seeds into my mind and into my heart that came from the kingdom of heaven, that came from the kingdom of light, those were the things that bore fruit later on in my life that set me free. They truly were because it, on one side of the equation, the enemy was so insidious at, like you said, manipulating the word. Like early on, people were traumatizing me with the King James version of the Bible. So like if ever I tried to get help in healing, like I was traumatized to it, you know, to make me like fearful to it. They used the weapon of the word of God as a weapon against me early on. And that's like the enemy has been doing that from the beginning. It's like the first things when he's contending with Yeshua and like the temptation and the trial, he's using the word to try to hitch him up. He's using the word to try to manipulate him, to coerce him, right? The enemy doesn't change tactics because they're very effective. He's been, st- he's, these are, we are battling these immortals. Like we really are wrestling with these immortals. I totally understand sometimes the desire to be the vigilante side of life. I pursued that endeavor diligently early on, but at the end of it, it kept replicating. Like there's a more agents of evil behind the scenes that were going to th- rise up and take their place. It was like I cut one head off and two, two more would pop up the next day. And like there is there is this spiritual power source behind the scenes, this iniquity force, right, that is powering it. Like it says when iniquity was found in Lucifer, Hallel, Ben Shahar, like that's the first time that iniquity, that was the power bank that the kingdom of darkness has to operate from. That like when you read and study the scriptures, you get an idea of who your enemy is, how he operates, who who the kingdom is of of righteousness and the kingdom of darkness, because that's it. There is no kingdom of man. Like there is a kingdom of heaven and there is a kingdom of darkness and everybody is going to fall into those two places at the end of it. This is a war for the souls of mankind. This is it. And on one side, the enemy, he looks to us as batteries. He's looking to us as things that he can plug himself into and drain us of our life, suck away like a parasite feeding on a host, keep us alive just enough to sustain ourselves. But otherwise, he's going to drain us of everything and fuel us. That's why he says, like, ignorance, be not ignorant of the schemes of the devil, because it's that ignorance that allows us to be taken captive by him to do his desires. And it's people's 
I guess their weakness of understanding what the word really says, the lack of basic combat training that is given by the church at large to the disciples, to the body that keeps us continually under the influence of the dragon. Because of that, we are taken captive by him to do his desires. But it was diligent study of it. Like the first time I read it from Genesis to Revelation, man, early on in my life, that changed me. Those were formative years when I was like sixth grade. I was like, this is what I needed. And like, but if you go back a couple generations, this is how children learned how to read. This is where they learned arithmetic. This was where they learned the foundations of morality and character and family. Like they understood what covenant theology was. They understood so much more about the history of the world, the real history of the world, like that the Bible was a reliable historical text. That was a well understood thing. And because of that, archaeologists, engineers, people, architects, people of all these different traits had that framework of mind. And it left a society that governed itself autonomously. It didn't require magistrates and kingships. It didn't require that. And that's why this territory of America had such a unique expression, a unique expression of the father's morality in a lot of ways. Clearly, there's those behind the scenes agents of evil that were operating, trying to take over and turn it into the new Atlantis and all this other stuff. But there was in this, na in this nation a unique expression of that because the scriptures was the source from which so much of the discipline was instituted out and that same thing can happen today and that's that's why we try to wage this war behind by by setting captives free by speaking the truth without fear or shame or guilt by boldly proclaiming the gospel that's foolishness to the greeks right like it's absolute insanity to people to talk about a lot of these topics but it's the, but the truth is always fruitful those words will never return void and so i am adamantly opponent of it that's why i did an entire recording of the audio of the scriptures like i did it from genesis to revelation so people could watch themselves in the water of the word i was like if you could immerse yourself in anything study this word for yourself so you know what it says yeah. because then you're not led captive by people that like you just said manipulate the word and try to make it re turn into all kinds of deceptive doctrines of demons you know and these are, know the, these word. are the things that we need in order to fight for back sure. against this kingdom well you use so you what i like to say ask you a question is that uh, since you know the word has been changed and names have been changed and and versions have been changed what do you his his name is you know in the bible they change it's jesus you know they change it to jesus but i love the i love using the term yeshua i feel like it shouldn't be I don't think they should. I don't. I, I've. I'm starting to fall into the terms of not calling them Jesus anymore because Christ is his title. It's not his last name. His name isn't Jesus. You know, I'm not like John. You know, Christ or you know, his last name is his title. But what is your opinion on that? Because they do teach that, and that's it. And the name is and this to to call upon his name. It's a big deal. You know what I mean? I, I feel like when you're saying Yeshua. I feel like you you understand that type of that change. So do you feel like yeah. is do you think it's proper to use excuse me, Yeshua, or do you think it's proper to use Jesus? What 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 would that's what in your opinion, what would you say? You know, I I think it's an absolutely fantastic question. First of all, I for myself, I like to be specific about who it is I'm talking to. If Thank that makes you. sense, because because the version of Jesus that if I use the name Jesus when I'm talking to people and I come from especially Boulder, Colorado, and, and there was an infectious of uh, this new age ideological pursuit where Jesus was a different kind of God to a lot of different people that I talked to. The name Jesus meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And so on one side of it, when I grew up, what Jesus meant when I would talk about Jesus had a, a term of a perception in people's minds. But you can see how that's being steered in so many different doctrinal directions. Universalism was a huge thing where I was, where people had this watered down version of, of the Bible to whatever the New Testament, and then only a select portion of what the New Testament said. So was that what was their driving message? And that's all they pursued, that it was just love, right? Jesus is just love. The God of the Old Testament is just hate, you know, and it was kind of this dichotomy. And this is really this kind of Gnostic gospel that was being perpetuated all the time. And then for myself, too, there was never no one used the name Yahuwah or Yahweh at all doing any of those abuses that I was going through. God and Lord and Jesus Christ, all that stuff was weaponized in its own way against me. But what it led me to, like, there's this um, 
I'll grab it here in a second. Like I, I started really studying the Hebrew for myself because I took a class when I was 13 years old that like it was a Bible class where the guy would not allow us to speak our opinions unless we could substantiate it with at least two or three references from the scripture. And that was a paradigm shifter for me because I had to defend what I believed. I had to be able to per- make a persuasive argument from the scriptures why I believed what I believed. And that was incredibly difficult to do when I realized a lot of what I believed was just stuff I'd heard as opposed to stuff I'd studied. And so for me, when I began to study the name, that was an imperative thing that I had to learn. Like, why why was in the scriptures the name yod heh vav heh like we get for where we get God or where we get Lord predominant for or the Lord God? Why was that taken out, you know, over 5,000 times out of the scriptures? Why was that taken out and replaced with the title, like where we get Lord? Or why was God replaced with, why was Elohim replaced with God, you know? Because the word God is even more blatantly, even more so than Jesus. You know, God is used on our money. It's like an invocation and in all kinds of ceremonies and rituals for pagan. Because a God could be any God. Like you could be like. Right. And so, so for me, I think a specificity of terms is is incredibly important so that people have a clarity of understanding of who it is I'm talking about, yeah. you know, and for me, Yeshua is a way of differentiating who it is I'm talking about to people because, you know, it's in the beginning, I might use Jesus to, so that people have a clear, Hey, this is the framework of what I'm talking about. But then I might specify it a little more so that, cause I got to know him as Jesus. That was like the first time I ever heard his name. That was not, and I've, I've seen demons cast out in the name of Jesus. I've seen, I have seen miracles and signs and wonders that have followed the name of Jesus. It's not to say that I don't believe there's still power there, but I believe I've gotten to know him as who he was much more than what he was first presented to me as he was like an Israelite, you know, like he was a Hebrew and I lacked a basic framework of understanding what the Hebraic mindset was. I lacked so much of an understanding of the context of the period of time of which he came, who he came to, why he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, why then the gospel was preached out to the nations. Like I didn't understand any of these things early on. And in, as I got to know him more, to me, it was much more of an intimate relationship that I developed and cultivated with him. And I wanted people to to understood how I'd gotten to know him. And for me, using the name Yeshua, to me, is a direct way of communicating, I know you now. Like, I got to know you as your name, Jesus. Now I've gotten to know you. You have that, that I do my best. Response. I know there's lots of different ways people say Yeshua, 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 all these different kind of ways that it's broken down by different people. Okay, I think, you know, like... There's, Nathan, there's your, your, Nathan, your your volume is kind of not me, the volume. I think it, it's not the volume; it's the mic. It sounds like it's going in and out a little bit. But well, so here's the thing: was. the uh, yeah, you well, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm asking is that if if you were alive yes. in the times of Jesus or Yeshua, and you and he was standing, turned facing the other way, and you said his name, which one would he answer to, though? Well, you know I mean, here's the would thing. it be, I, like you said, specificity, yeah. I'm just asking because I like the way he does that, but I've been, I've been thinking in my head, I'm like, man, what if they, what if they change his name that way to, to, you know, you have, to you actually, credit to another God or something? Yes. Well, to somehow, some way throw that in there to be like, okay, well, because the translation is, is, is because mostly German, because that's where the J's come from. The J comes from the, 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 the German part of the, well, well like the German if you go into part. different languages, here's the thing. Like if you go into Thai, it's like, Fra Yashu, you know, that's how you say Jesus. Or if you go okay, into so like different. Okay, so what's crazy about that is oh. that that's, that's, that's that translation. Yeah, if you go to that language, what I was going to say is if you go to different languages, it's not going to be Yoshua or it's not going to be Oshua. It's not going to be, they say it in like, you know, in different, different languages, it's going to, his name's going to be different. So now if you go back to the Hebrew, it's, it's Yoshua. Yeah. Like the Mashiach. Yeah. Oshua. So I, I agree with maybe that's what we should say, but uh, like Jesus would be more of like, I think uh, coming from the Greek, right? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. So I think it's just depending on, where where you are geographically they're going to say Jesus's name differently but we should i think you should, we should go to the to the to the hebrew and say oshua i think so too and i've been doing that lately too dude that's cool that you you said that jason and and uh no. and and like yahweh like they say it's like breathing in like yeah yahweh like it's like you could say that or some people say you know jehovah some people say you know yahweh babe they say it different ways you know like as far as god the father Compared to Jesus, so I think it's because they name him Emmanuel. Like you will name him, you know, his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel which is God is with us. Yeah, that's yeah. that's another name, another term for him. But Jesus is, I don't know, man. It's just it just kind of 
Can I throw this before? Because there was no J back then in the Hebrew, so people. Yeah, but still, he what is that? He he's us. He's us. That still doesn't. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, yeah. Yes. this is like where the transliteration is kind of broken down from the Greek and, and it like sucks said, because addition. You, it, it sucks <laughs> because you get this 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 little doubt in your mind about why they would do something like that you know like I know I, like you said I know him as who I don't even care like there's this guy on uh man I forgot, I forgot his name he's a he's a he's a Roman he's a he's a Catholic he's a He's a ex cop, ex LAPD PD detective. I can't remember his name right now, but uh, it, sh it should come up to me. But um, oh. Jesse Perez, I think it's Jesse per Jesse Perez or something like that. Jesse, something. Okay. it's okay. What's up? But he yeah. he he's like saying that he's like, well, the Roman Catholic is is is, is if you could ask any occultist, what religion is the true religion in this world. And they see says and they say that's the Roman Catholic religion. I said, and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, why is he saying it like religion, religion, religion? Like, like, like they because it is a religion. Like, there's no, there's no anywhere in the Bible where it says be religious. And it's it's so when I hear him say that, I'm like, man, I do agree with you, dude. That is the biggest religion on the planet. But it, it's like if you're if you're gonna they have all these things about casting out demons and, and or, or doing exorcism and stuff like that and he's all into the occultism so i'm just like oh, oh okay. man you you and he's like oh and they're, and they're they're so afraid of mary they're so i was like dude you're you're <laughs> tripping bro like all you do <laughs> is uh, like i i can sit there and tell you too that i i cast out demons all day long in the name of, it's like you're not you're it's not, not the power of the of the priest though, or the power of the exorcist, or it's not the power of the. Pastor, I just know, like, but I the know. name still. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. saying his name is Jesus, and you're casting out the name of Jesus, and that's not his name, who are you know what I mean? That's that bugs me, because I'm. Yeah. That's what I'm trying. That's where I'm. I, I want to get to know him more to where it's like, yo, you know your homies' names. You know your homies' name, your best friends' names. You know your mom's names by heart. Is it wrong for me to call him Jesus? Is it wrong for me to? I that's where I get a little torn up. And when Nathan was saying Yeshua, I was like, oh man, I like that. That's good. I'm glad that he's doing that. There's more people that should be doing that. It's a, it's like, just congratulations, a lot. Nathan. It's awesome. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying it doesn't matter, Josh. It's blasted oh, yeah. all through the. It says this, the, the word Testament. Jesus is the Latin form of the Greek uh, Leosis, which in turn is the translation of Hebrew uh, Yeshua or Joshua, or again, uh, J, J, I don't know how they say it, Jehoshua, meaning Jehovah is salvation. So it's yeah, basically so. like if you go it's to different languages, what, my, so point, my point was in different languages, they wouldn't say Oshua or they wouldn't even say Jesus. They're going to say it in a different way. So it just depends on where you're at. So Jesus is going to know when you're calling on him. And I know what you mean, though, that talking to demons, you need to be specific, maybe say in the name of Yoshua, but they, they understand, like, if you're, like, in Latin America and you say Jesus, that's, like, how you say it in Latin. Like, if you talk in, in America, we use Jesus as well because that's what it is. But And in the Bible says Jesus as well. Like, all these different versions say Jesus. This, this, so. is, a good, this, is, this is a good topic to go on. I, I don't know. I'm sorry I brought it up, but it's just, like, it's, it's okay. Hard. So I think, personally, think if you're, it, like, bro. in Japan, you're not going to say Jesus. You're going to say it in Japanese. Or if you're in Philippines, you're going to say it in – there's just different ways of, of saying it depending well, on the Spanish, language. Spanish, my name is Jason. Yeah, but there's you know Jesus, I mean? there's Jesus Cristo instead of Jesus. They they pronounce it different, but I'm just saying that it depends on where you're at, like where where you're gonna say it. But I understand what you mean, Jason. Like you want to know him personally and use his name correctly. I think that that's in the Hebrew is is Oshua, yeah, Oshua the Mashiach, yeah. And and a lot of people. I'm just saying, like if you go, it's <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping, but maybe God knows. It, maybe maybe I'm maybe it's wrong i don't know but i'd, I'd rather if you feel convicted it. then hey man it's made a certain way it just does, go study bro. it, it study does it and, but, the, study but it that's his out. name you know what i'm saying that's that's it that's his name <laughs> <laughs> what am i supposed to do it's hard to understand that because in english no matter what yeshua and joshua is is i know that the why or there was no j but still i would still call you yeshua 
You know, yeah. it's still called, if, if I knew that it was your name, Josh, that, 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 or Nathan's real name was, you know, Charles, you know what I mean? And, and then, you know, but everyone wrote in the book that his name was Nathan. I'm like, well, his, I know him by Charles. I know he goes by Charles. That's his <laughs> real name. If I, I go, you're saying. if I Nathan, you. you know what I mean? Or, you know, like, so if I'm calling out, if I'm calling you out sincerely, are you calling I'm not trying to say I'm this is this is some this is stuff that bothers this me. This is food for thought. I understand, bro. Yes. Totally get what you're saying. And it, it is, he has the name bro. above every name, right? In heaven, hell, yes, on the earth, you. in the earth, and below the earth. So you're it's a good, it's definitely a good study, man. We could study that and uh sometime we could get into it. And study but I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for calling that because I do too. I, I'm doing a lot now too, but it is it's some people are like, what are you talking about? Why man, why, why I do think, you, I, I think the thing you hit fundamentally on the head is as you've gotten to know him more, this is the stuff that starts to, to get onto your mind. And that's that's uh -huh. a beautiful thing, you know, is <laughs> yeah. that we should have a desire as we get to know him more to be able to understand him and that we would be able to, to have an intimacy in our relationship with him. And fundamental to that, yeah, for me, it was also the study of his name was important because like you said, the aspect of name too, you got to also remember like – to a Hebrew, when someone say like, remember my name or call upon my name, it's not just like the, the letters of the name, like Yod, Hey, Vav, Shin, Ayin, that's Yahshua, right? Or Yahushua or Yahshua, right? There's that Yod is the front letter. Okay. Like that Yod means something in Hebrew. That means nothing to us. We, uh, y doesn't mean anything to us. Yod is a like Hebrew, an ox actually. Yod right? means yes, ox. Yes. Like the Aleph, yeah. right? It well, your like name, the, your the name letter. is specific. It but, means exactly what you're saying. So yes. Jesus and, doesn't mean exactly what, but, but that's, but that's right also now. because that's, that's because it's, it's, we're looking at a watered down, what's called a transliteration. So they, they've taken the translation, like you're saying from Hebrew to Greek, to yeah. Latin, to yeah. English. That's the, the, the trail Aramaic events, actually right? it went from Hebrew to Aramaic to, to, to Latin, to Greek, to now English, right? Cause they did the, they did the, um, the Septuagint and then they did it mm -hmm. in English. So and they, dude, it's like, but 72 people. Because were, like, you remember, know, like you say a great deceptions co comes. Yeah. What if that is, what if that's, a, what if that's one of the biggest deceptions that you could do to something by your, by blasphemy, by calling upon someone else's name in the middle. It's like, oh, that's the wrong name. Yeah. Like how, how do you, I don't know, man. Like you said, this is, sorry, Nathan, but this is stuff right, like that but... I'm like, man, I'm sitting there studying and I, and I go through and I read it all. And then you're like, well, in Nathan, name, in, hold Jason, on, just, just finish your prayer with the name of Jesus, amen, right? And what if, like, that doesn't mean anything? Well, Nathan was just no. reading Matthew, and I was reading Matthew. So, dude, this is exactly what podcasts are supposed to do, organically speak. So, I like it. I Good. Well, you bet. Matthew's and, a Jewish person, so he would have called them Yeshua. That's <laughs> I don't know. And that's, you're, you're, you're on point, man, with, with trying to with trying to bring this, this up is, is good to be able to talk about it and to be able to study it out, man. And I would encourage you to study the name as you do that, you know, go, go down. Like for me, that's why I started learning paleo Hebrew. That's the original form of it. Yod is literally like the working hand of the creator. It's like setting to motion. Like think of like an, a man's hand as he's starting to work with his body. That's literally the Yod, but that, that encapsulates so many other things. And then like he is encoded in his name. There's so much meaning that is put there. And so like, I, I got really fixated on studying Paleo Hebrew. A guy named Eric Bissell, erictology.net is his website, was where I got totally into a different level of understanding because, because he says in his scripture that he watches, Yahuwah watches over his word day and night to bring it to pass, which means like he's a guardian over his word. Okay, well, then I read in the scripture, who is his word, right? Like, okay, now now there's this deeper depth of meaning of understanding, like, He's diligently watching over his word to bring it to pass. And that's literally what the, the Messiah came to do. Like he put became the living Torah, put on flesh. He was the embodiment. He was the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. He was the word. In the beginning was the word. Like these are imperative concepts that are sewn into there. So if, if I study his word, I should be able to see the Messiah from beginning to end. Yeah. Like he should be clearly written, concealed in a sense, but written from the beginning to the end. And literally... As you read along in the in the scriptures, there is like the Aleph and the Tav. If you read an English Bible, you're never going to see this, okay? There's no Bible puts it in there, but it's like a um, literally as you're reading along from Genesis 1, you'll go along and there's literally this Aleph Tav that's just hit, 
putting in on there. And some of it's a placeholder that some people argue that it's a, it's a use for in Hebrew as a way of kind of breaking up the sentence. But it's literally scattered from the beginning of the scriptures to the end is the Aleph top. And then when you go into Revelation and he literally says, I am the Aleph in the top. In Greek, it says, I am the Aleph, Al Alpha and the Omega, right? But that's literally, he's saying, I am the firstborn, the architect, the, the original thought, the one who started this entire thing. I am the author and I am the concluder. The Tav is like the, the sign of the covenant, the, the X on the end of the contract where you sign your name, like the beginning and the end. That's who he is claiming to be. And so as you study his word, like that's why I, I encourage you, go down that road, man, of studying it. But that being said, I also will say this, that I, we just read in that same verse in Matthew's hand, he literally said, like, they're accusing him of being a demon, right? Having demons. That's why he's casting these out. And at the same time, he says, can Satan cast out Kate, Satan? You know what I'm saying? And so I don't, I really do not believe that the name Jesus is a foreign mighty one, a different God that's getting power and authority and is casting out demons in that sense. I believe that that name, in a sense, has been corrupted because name really means character, identity, actions, like, like a good name is more valuable than rubies, it says in the book of Proverbs. Like that, that idea is the imperative function here to understand, because when you have an idea of what your wife is, you might call her honey, right? You might call your wife, honey, you might call her sweetie, but these are things that encapsulate who she is to you. Now, when you want to call her out by name, you know how to do that, right? And that is the important thing of understanding because to your child, mom, it means something very, very different than what she means to you. And those concepts are all caught up in what their name really is. And so when we call upon his name, like it says, like literally when you are in, in a place of despair, of sorrow, of, of, of suffering, calling out to him and calling on him by name is a powerful thing is important that we do that. And by doing that with whatever name that he's been presented to you to the best of your understanding and ability is is critical. But if it, as you mature in your walk and you begin to understand who he is in a deeper way and that character of who he is deepens, that's where it is. It's more powerful because your relationship gets more intimate in a sense. Yeah. And uh, like you were saying, man, like from, we know that you know, he is through the scriptures because even in first Colossians 15, it says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, which doesn't mean that he was born. It just means that this is talking about like they even use this with David. It's like his kingship. Like he's, you know, he's the creation. He's at the top, though, he's he's at the, top. the firstborn of all creation for by him, all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things in him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things, he may have the, the preeminence. So dude, that stuff like that, dude, is like, man, you know, that he was available, you know, he was, he was there uh, in the beginning. And then when it does say he was in, you know, in the beginning was the word, the word is with God, the word was God. And then the word became flesh. It's such an amazing uh, connection there. But yeah, he's definitely throughout the scriptures. You can see that. And yeah, that's a, yeah, I think um, we'll have to do a study on that, Jason, you know, on, on what you brought up and maybe we could do a little in-depth study on that. Go ahead, go ahead, Nathan. It looks like you brought some, a book with you. I just, I just wanted to point out, this is, this is one of those study tools, man, that, that is one of the most valuable things in my collection. Like this is called a, a comprehensive etymological dictionary of the Hebrew language for English readers. It's by this guy named he, Ernest Klein. And so you were mentioning earlier, Josh, like some of the tools that you use for study, like the Strong's <laughs> Concordance, right? But there is many, many other dictionaries and different ways of being kind of breaking down a word based off of how it's used. Like definition may come through use. Definition may come through other languages that are associated with it. But this, this is one of those resources that helped me so much as I began to study, okay, what does that – if I want to know what that word means, looking it up on Strong's is one way of doing that. But learning from a Hebrew mindset what that word meant gave me a totally different depth to it. Like there's this verse that I've always heard, like everybody references, especially like guys doing shows, right? They're like, iron, as iron sharpens iron, yeah. so does one man sharpen the countenance of his friend's face, right, as of another man. You know, and I've always been like, man, I love knives and I sharpen them like crazy and I almost never use metal to do it. And that's always kind of been like, what? I don't, I don't understand that. Because I understand you can use a file to kind of sharpen a knife, but nobody does. Like you use stone. And I'm like, why do we use stones? Like always. Like, and so like that verse, I, I wanted to look it up. But if you look it up everywhere else, it's gonna say, Yeah, it's iron. It's iron and iron. But I looked it up in here and it, it's literally the word Brazil. Like Brazil is the Hebrew word iron. Like that's literally the country name, got its name, it's a Hebrew word. 
And it starts to get crazy when you start to like go down this road because you start to find out Hebrew words are all over the Americas. They're all over this territory. And you start to realize, well, like there's Paleo Hebrew inscriptions all over the Americas. Like it's clear that there are Israelites here, like not just a few, like lots of them. And that there was a distinct, absolute, deliberate cover up of the archaeological evidence of the Hebrews being here in the Americas, like the lost sheep of the house of Israel were here. And you're like, oh, well, this is super fascinating because not only are they covering up that there's giants here, not only are they covering up all these other facets of like, yeah, the red hair giants, like everywhere, all over the place. A bunch of cannibalistic giants were rampaging the Americas. A bunch of people that were worshiping dragons and sacrificing humans and cutting their hearts out. Like this was permeating. That's why they say how. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they say yeah. how. Because they literally, make sure you, don't you don't have six, have six fingers. fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. dude. Yeah. These are, these are like fundamental things that made up our society. And like just the name Brazil is the Hebrew word for iron. But it also, when you look at it in this dictionary, it also is somebody that forges iron like an iron worker, like a blacksmith. And I was like, dude, that's exactly right. And it's like, as a, as a blacksmith forges iron, so does one man sharpen or reform the countenance of his friend. Like that's, that makes sense to me, you know? And so like, there's ways of looking at the scriptures through different lenses. And I have found some of my favorite pearls in the scriptures by starting to learn it from a Hebraic perspective that really gave me a deeper understanding of it. Now it takes me forever because I'm not literate. I can't read Hebrew. The modern Hebrew looks like ants crawling on a page to me a lot of times. And I'm like, this is overwhelming. But the Paleo Hebrew was a way of looking at it pictographically because I grew up in the deserts of the Southwest around hieroglyphics, petroglyphs all the time. And I was like, I want to be able to know what these things says. And he said, even a child can understand his word. Like our children should be able to understand his word, which means the form of Hebrew was something that a child could pick, pick up. And that's what pictographic languages were used to communicate. The same way you use emojis, the same way you use characters on a keyboard to mm -hmm. communicate a concept. That's how the father originally communicated through his word to his people so that people could pick it up. That's why you're saying the Aleph is literally, it looks like a bull. It looks like a buffalo. Like, and to a person that came from that kind of a culture, that communicated a lot of information. And they were able to learn and grow from that. And so this that book to me is one of my most favorite tools. And I'd highly encourage you, man. I'll send you over the link to Eric Eric Bissell's stuff, but it would it would really bless you, man, to be able to to learn the word and study it in, in maybe a different perspective. Yeah, and I have the Greek uh dictionary like that too, that somebody actually uh sent to me. <laughs> we get we get some cool wow. stuff sent from the, the listeners, which is which is awesome. But um, yeah. So if you look at it in uh in the Strong's Concordance, just just so you know, it's uh, you can use like strength or oppression, uh, a material, uh, furniture, utensils, implements, and it does say iron, iron ore, tool of iron. But yeah, so that's cool that you you're looking a little deeper, right? Study to show thyself to prove, and then you get these different definitions, and and it's like when you start reading the scriptures, it like opens up a whole new level of like understanding and it's like yeah and I, i've been doing it a lot with uh you know because i do like a, a hebrew cosmology basically you know biblical cosmology show when i hop on people's show and i'm like man i need to make sure what i'm saying is like legitly you know the right way that i'm putting it so i'm like literally doing that to make sure that i'm going back backtracking to make sure i'm not explaining it the wrong way you know and uh, it'd probably be good to get that dictionary, find out what this means, that means, and and kind of just make sure when I'm teaching, it's like it's sharp and it's and it's correct. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be uh, teaching in a, in the wrong way. And you know, you know how it is, man. It's like you just want to make sure that you're you're prepared and and you're doing the the right teaching, so you're not teaching it. <laughs> you do the wrong thing. The last thing you want to do is to be changing God's word, right? That's what it says in Revelation. He who changes it, you know, you know, you get all the plagues in the book. It's, it's bad to race out of the book of life, all that stuff. So it's definitely important not to change or add to the scriptures. And I'm noticing that even, even right there when it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, people are adding a gap theory. Satan's kingdom was before that. This happened before the, all this stuff happened. Like, it's like, whoa hold on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you noticed that, but I, I, I noticed it, man. Some people say it's not even a gap theory. It's a gap fact. And I'm like, Whoa, you know, we're adding to the scriptures there. We're adding our own story. Cause we don't know when, you know, the angels were created. We don't know when Satan fell and then that's okay to not know the Bible's not explaining that. I've had people ask me questions like when were the angels created, you know, and when, and it's honestly, if the, if the scriptures don't say it, I'm okay telling you, Hey, it doesn't say when they were created. I know that they clapped though when the foundations of the earth were, were you mm -hmm. know created, laid. 
but I do know that they cheered. So they were here before, you know, I would say day one. So it, it just gets interesting, but dude, the, to, to take the scriptures and make them come alive. That's what happens when you, when you study these different definitions, right. I think it's important for people to do that. And that's why you see these uh, different pastors, uh, you know, they get, they, they, they do two sermons, right? Usually they do like a Wednesday and a Sunday it's it's nice when these pastors like Chuck Missler and these different guys that when they when they do those in depth the depth deep studies and then when they preach on Wednesday that's why they get a couple of days to to you know dig deep I think and it's it's important man for them to not sugarcoat the the sermon and and it's important for them to dig deep as well you know so you can tell when they're doing that <laughs> you know and it's cool that you got that book because that helps, man. That extra diction, you know, the extra. So you can see it from a Hebrews perspective, right? Is that is that what that book is is for? Well, well, yeah. It, and it's it's written by a guy who just an uh, expert on many many different languages. And so he he's the way that he looks at the words to help establish their definitions is from a, a multidisciplinary perspective. And so like even like the word Obed. You know, like these are some of the first commandments given to man ever, like literally this word Obed. And in our Bibles, they'll say till, you know, he's like, oh, till the soil. That's like not what he said. Like that's one way of translating it. But like an Obed was like somebody who was a worshipful servant, somebody who labored diligently and like, like, like a priest, but like a worshiper. But like what we're doing right now is being an Obed. Like we get this, this name in the book of Obadiah, like an obedient servant of Yah. Like that is like one of the purest forms of worship that we can have is studying the word. Like it's literally challenging and exhorting each other, questioning. Like this is a form of worship and it's in a pure and powerful way because this is literally how we learn to use those tools more effectively. Like when you go to Hebrews 4 and it talks about the word, the word of Elohim is living and active. It's, this thing's alive. We're dealing with a living book, okay? It's living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the bone and the marrow, the soul and the spirit, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of the hearts of man. Every creature is laid bare before it. Like everything gets exposed by the word. And so the more that we, like you're saying, gar gird up the loins of our mind and study this, understand it the more effective we will be in combat and i'm like actually talking about that when you're out there contending for the souls of men like when you get into into serious demonic oppression with somebody who's like suicidal somebody who's like out of their mind crazy like when you get into encounters power encounters what i call them like when you get in showdowns with somebody that's got poltergeist activity in their house, they've got night terrors that are traumatizing them, sleep paralysis, when they're dealing with alien abduction stuff. Like when you're called to the front line of battle of where the war is going, just be real clear. Like this is where the kingdom of righteousness, our soldiers should be. We should be giving answers to those questions that people are having. People are going to be more dealing with demonic oppression now than ever in the history of mankind. There are more hordes of hell being unleashed on people than ever in the history of the world. This is the time when the immortals, the fallen watchers and all of their sons of chaos are unleashing every weapon in their arsenal like they're coming at us with everything they got and because of that so many people have so many doors open all these occult portals all of these like rituals of the stuff i went through people open up those doorways by sacrificing their children on these stones those stones literally sit there with a door open that allows the demonic to come flooding in like these things are being engineered in our cities in our towns in our in our areas to just bombard us to onslaught us but when we have this word literally when you're in those showdowns you pray man i'm telling you it i stand on that word and it says like the promise of the spirit of truth that he said it's better that i go right and that the great comforter would come to you the spirit of truth who will bring to remembrance all these words that i've spoken to you like i dude i i literally call on that and i'm like i am dependent on you to help bring into remembrance these words that i put in i've stored up in my heart that i could then be able to be ready to go in a day of battle because you know what when we don't eat this bread and we don't eat this stuff on a daily basis man we're going to be starving in a battle and i'm telling you when you're hungry in the middle of a of a, of a life and death scenario it's the last place you want to be hungry right then but when you go through those encounters i'm telling you he will bring verses to your mind like boom 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 like that's his spirit coming on you and it's that word that he brings to you but if you're not putting this word in you're going to be hungry and you're going to fail and you'll slip up in those battles and you'll realize what you'll be wishing you had done is studied better 
because you're suddenly encountering an immortal. You're suddenly encountering a disembodied spirit of the Nephilim that's been around for 6,000 years, troubling mankind, tormenting mankind, feasting on mankind's ignorance, right? But if instead you come with boldness, confidence, courage, man, and the authority of, of your, of the creator of the heavens and the earth backing you up, man, those things flee. They really do flee at the, the sons of righteousness. The, it says the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as lions. And that comes from these convictions. That comes from having your feet firmly shod in the gospel of peace, shalom, no chaos. It's not just peace. Like it literally means no chaos. Yahuwah says he's not the author of confusion but he is the author of peace. And so like when that peace, these are supposed to be signs that follow us, that accompany us. And part of that comes to us taking the time to be disciplined men of God, disciplined men of righteousness say, yeah. that invest our, our, our few hours, waking hours that we do have available to invest it in this word. That will come back to us. That's that fruitfulness that's promised to us. It may not be now. Like there's stuff I'm calling upon. I've done like 150 interviews in the last six months and I'm, I am dealing with content that I sowed into it 10 years before him, 15 years before yeah. him. And that's that's that promise of a good reward that's going to come to us if we study this stuff now while we have the time. Because you know what? There's a lot of places in this country, in this world, like you said, where they do tear out pages of the Bible, where they literally rip them out and you're not allowed to have access to those other missing pages. Like there's, there's dozens of books that have been ripped out of the Bible that I'm holding that used to be in 1611 King James Version for a reason, because they yeah. specifically explained a lot of the spiritual hierarchy. They explained a lot of the mechanics behind the scenes of how the enemy operates, and they're not there now. But we have access access to him, praise be to Yah. And so we can go and study those, you know, but there's people who treasure one page of this scripture so much, they memorize it as soon as they have it. Like they diligently learn that word and they value it. And that's that, that promise of a good reward. If we would have that same discipline, even when we're not being persecuted over it, like that's the stuff that will make us a totally different force. That's what how we become special forces. They're called gibberim in his scriptures, mighty men of valor, right? David had these special forces that they're talked about. Well, it's that's the mighty and brave warriors of God. That's our goal is to be like them, to be imitators of our Messiah so that we can go in confidence that demons are going to show up when we walk in a room and we know how to engage them and we know how to set captives free and loosen the bonds of, on the oppressed. It takes discipline, like you talked about, and obedience you know, because the demons will know, you know, also if you're not being obedient to God, right? So I think it's that discipline that you talked about for us to sit and study the word, but it's the obedience of, of your day-to-day -day life. Uh, it, it also, you know, having that obedience. So I think it's interesting. Yeah, so we have 2 Corinthians 10, 3. It says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war against as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Uh, for the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity and obedience to Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience with the obedience is fulfilled. So I think it's uh, the obedience as well as something that we need to have as the, you know, to be a mighty warrior of Christ. And that's something we need to pray for too. I think a lot of us pray for certain things, you know, other people, but I'm, I try to pray, you know, for obedience because I get frustrated with myself if I'm not obedient to God as well. And discipline is built up. It's like I could be disciplined for the military. I can listen to a sergeant major. I can listen, you know, if the sergeant major is standing there in the army, you're, you're going to be like, you know, if the captain's there or if, if there's like a, um, a general there, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be straight up. And then all of a sudden, how am I going to be for God? God is way higher than any of those people. So I started thinking like, I got to be, you know, you got to have the same level of obedience and respect and everything because the most high is watching you like grasshoppers you know what i mean through the you know i, I think he's you know I, I believe he's watching you through the firmament we're being watched like grasshoppers at all times he's out you know alpha omega you got to make sure that we're you know we're given given the same respect on a day-to-day -day basis because everything you do is being recorded in the book of life you know so mm -hmm. obedience and discipline and 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 the way you build that in you know you could build it in different ways for me it's um I think it's built for me, uh, besides just the scriptures and everything in the prayer and everything, it, like I'm, I'm building it in different ways. And I think the military was one way that I got to learn how to have that, 
And uh, like you said, it is MK Ultra for sure. But if you can use that MK Ultra for good, like you're doing, Nathan, right now, you're using all that stuff that they did against the enemy. You know, that's the same thing with me. I'm using the discipline that I learned in the military and everything against the enemy, like the like the internet. We're using the internet and Zoom against the enemy. Other people are using this type of stuff for only fans and all the bad stuff and we're using it to go against the enemy you know the world wide web created at cern we get on the world wide web and we try to spread the word of god and try to attack the enemy you know we use all this stuff for good for the righteousness even god used the nephilim and everything that happened in the bible genesis 6 god you know the devil tried to oh, i'm gonna mess up the dna and what did he do dude david came when he slayed goliath you know he's using all this evil for good that's what we do, man, and and God uses us as a vessel. But one thing I'm trying to say is, is, is a, it's a it's important to have the obedience and the discipline, like you said. So when you do go against these demons, you do have the, how do you how are you gonna have the confidence? The way you have the confidence is being obedient to God's word, uh, doing the will of God, and then having in discipline, and then also having the word of God down where you could just say it at at that given moment. You know, I think it's important. Right on the head. It's here's in second in Ephesians chapter two. It said, "And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once lived in the lust of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, as also the rest." But Elohim, who is rich in compassion because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Messiah. By favor, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Messiah Yeshua in order to show in the coming ages the exceeding riches of his favor in kindness towards us in Messiah Yeshua. For by favor, you have been saved through belief. That's not of yourselves. It is the gift of Elohim. It's not by works that so that no one should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works, which Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in this. This is like absolutely spot on, man. This is the process of sanctification is obedience. It's reverence. Like you said, man, that reverence for your commander, reverence for the supreme authority, man, that is imperative. And that's the fear of Elohim. Like the fear of God is the, the fountainhead of wisdom. Like if we want to have any of that, and that's, that's what our society has instead perseverated fears of everything else, fears of man, fears of death, fears of failure, fears of lack, fears of not having enough, like fears of what other people are going to think about us, the, the phobos, right? This, this gods of fear that have been unleashed against us in every other arena, except the fear of him, except the fear of our creator, ex except for actually having reverential fear and respect for him, like a father who disciplines his sons. And you know, that feeling when dad's coming home and you know it, man, you know, you're going to stink and get it, dude. Like there's a real fear that imparts to us the desire to do good, to do what's pleasing in our father's sight. It's like as our children mature in their relationship and they start to incline to do your desire, like they want to do what you want. That's beautiful. But in the beginning, there's also just an instilling of fear and for obedience sake, you know, and that's, yeah. that's a good father chastising his son, disciplining his son so that he can learn those things, those disciplines, those that rebel resist it, stiffen their neck. Like it says, the Israelites were stiffening their necks like goats, resisting him to go astray. And like, I'm just like, I'm doing a big study right now in this, this series called the war of the ages where I'm going through a lot of the war of the immortals, right? Like understanding, like, how has this battle been playing out for all of this time? You know, and like the, the power source of the kingdom of darkness is disobedience. It is, that's that rebellion is literally their fuel source. So that is why he designed everything to facilitate disobedience, rebellion. And so this is why it's it's an unpopular gospel to preach the fear of God. But it is important because holiness, set-apartness, is our armor. It is the set-apartness of our creator that's in us. He's like, I want you be perfect as he is perfect. Be set apart like he's set apart. That means you're going to not be like the world. You're not going to look like them. You're not going to act like them. You're not going to look like – talk the way they do. You'll be distinct. That's a yes. power source for us because he is ultimately holy, holy, holy perfectly holy, completely other than the rest of all of this other stuff. And the enemy's power source comes from being defiled, from being 
first. And you know what? When we want to serve him, we're going to look like him. And when we don't, we get the stains of the world on us, man. And it, it weakens us. It eviscerates our power. And especially if we're sons and daughters of righteousness, because now we're defiling the body. Now we're abominating the body and we're weakening it corporately, you know, but as we be set apart, man, he, he empowers us. He goes on our side, man. He is going to make those pits that they're digging out there for us to go into, man. He says the enemy, they'll fall in the pits and the snares of their making. They're going to come into their own ruin, you know, like David is sitting there watching it. Psalm 37 and these powerful words, like they're going to fall into these snares that they've been digging, man. It's an inevitability. Mm. Yes. Amen, bro. And uh, yeah, I think disobedience is where you lose your confidence and it also separates you from God and sin separates you from God. Even Adam, when he sinned, God, even though he knows where Adam is at, he's like, where are you, Adam? Right. You know, he knows. And that's where it takes your confidence away. That's where the, the enemy, the demons will take your confidence away. And he, you think God's not there for you anymore. And you're just like, you just fall deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's what it's totally meant to do. And I, and I, I really agree with that. And um, us as um, warriors of God and, and podcasters or, you know, preachers or pastors or whatever you are, you know, it's like, ah, it's, it's something that, um you know, we are human, but we got to strive for, you know, we got to strive for that because if we want to call ourselves warriors and soldiers and all this stuff of God, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like basically like a PT test, you know, you got That's like the, the basic thing to be a soldier. Like the basic thing is obedient. And it's something that's hard that, that we all lack as humans. And we got to make sure we do because being born again, that's what God, that's what Jesus means. You're born again. So you're like, you're just a different person. Like you said, you're not of this world anymore. So I think it's interesting, man. Some beautiful stuff, man. And Jason, you want you got anything to add, bro? I don't want to. I think you're on mute. I don't even know if you were trying to talk. <laughs> I think no, I just I just listening, bro. I just told you, dude. Sometimes when I'm on mute, I don't want to. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, sneeze sure or cough do. or whatever. I don't want to. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So yeah, and we all know the Ephesians uh, six eleven. You know, put on the full armor of God so that you could take your stand against the de devil's schemes. Right, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, but against the rulers, uh, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Um, also in the in the Geneva Bible, it says the worldly governors. So it, it adds that in there, and then King James took that out. So that's some that's something that Jason was talking about other, earlier. So we're also going against the worldly governors, you know, not just the spiritual realm of the of highest places but also the you know the kings and queens and black nobility and jesuits and and uh you know all these different secret societies of this world like nathan knows you know the satanic ritual abuse people and all these disgusting uh child abusers and whatever they're doing man we're fighting against them along with the heaven the the forces of evil in the heavenly realms which means they are where the moon, sun, and the stars are, you know, and this, this is where all these battles are happening. And these are battles that Nathan was talking about. You know, if you look in the, the book of Daniel, you see that, uh, you know, uh, the Prince of Persia is fighting against, you know, an, uh, I think it might've been Gabriel, but we're not sure, but he's fighting against the Prince of Persia. He says he has to call Michael the archangel to come help him. And it takes 21 days for that prayer to be answered. So sometimes we might pray and think like, oh, God doesn't hear me. But literally that, that prayer is trying to get to God and there's spiritual battles happening and everything. And you don't even know about, you know, in the heavenly realms. And then maybe God will take another two weeks or three weeks to answer your prayer because literally the angels trying to take it to God and all this fighting is happening up there that we don't really know about or get to see. But we need to appreciate God and also appreciate the fact that we can even read the Bible because back in the day they used to have to, they, they weren't able to read. They kept them illiterate so that the priest or the, the whatever, the, the pastor back then would only be able to read the word of God and they would only read to them what they wanted them to read. You know, like we want to read you this so that you do indulgence and you pay us for you to go to heaven or, you know, we're lucky when we are blessed, dude, that God is so great for us to even be able to have the ability to be literate enough to read the Bible and have all these different versions to go against. And it's like, it's such a blessing. And, and what happens is the enemy puts all this stuff on your plate for you to not even have time to even read the Bible or even study it. So the stuff we're talking about is so important for, you know, that we even have these different versions, you know, and, and be able to teach and speak on, on this type of stuff in certain countries that they, you know, you, you might get your head cut off or killed yeah. for speaking. Like we're able to speak freely on this microphone about God. And we got to appreciate what we have here, guys. We, we have such a blessing, but the important thing is 
is study to show thyself approved is like, is like, we got to pick up the Bible and read. And, and I'm not saying that I'm like perfect or Nathan's perfect or Jason's perfect. And we're like some theologians, but we're just trying to do our best to, to show you that, that the Bible is alive well, and it's amazing. Like it's, it's so, it's like the foundation of everything that you should ever do that it's all, it's all there for you to understand. And it is the only absolute truth that we have in this world right now and with all these deceptions and everything that's coming jesus says do not be deceived so many times with these end times and the demons are going to be coming out more because when jesus was on the earth what was happening all these different possessions and all this stuff was happening and now we're getting closer i believe to the end times as the birth pains get stronger like nathan said dude they're 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 in every single city that we have in america dude there's Freemason Lodge here. There's the Lions Club here. And then there's the 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 Odd Fellows here. And then there's the Rosicrucians here. And and there's the Jesuits here. Then all these different every single city they got it locked. And they're praying for these portals, like Nathan's talking about. They're praying for these demons to to be fighting against all people like us. But you know what, dude? We don't fear the ones that could kill the body. We only fear the one that could kill the soul. Because God can handle all of them. He can flick them off, like I said, like little bugs. They're nothing compared to him. So all we could do, man, is just do our best. We love everybody that's listening to. We appreciate you guys. And, and hopefully we're doing our best to, to teach you, you know. It's all we could do, really. And that's that's the beauty of what we have while we still have the opportunity to do this. Because you said it right, man. We're using these tools that we still have available to us to communicate you know, we're, reach, we're able to reach and communicate right now while we're sitting in our houses, you know, we're able to actually communicate with people all over. We have no idea. This is like a witness that will go forth from here. We don't know where it's going to go. We literally don't know. We don't know when it's going to reach people, who it's going to reach or how it's going to be able to do that. But this is our opportunity to use these tools that we have available right now to advance the kingdom of righteousness. You know, like the enemy, the enemy has laid a, a deep and heavy entrenched network, but so did he back when the Israelites were living in Egypt. You know, way before, he's like, oh, Abraham's getting promised all this territory. I'm going to build up a massive infrastructure network to resist him. I am going to build up generational armies to resist him, fortified cities, strongholds, right? Like massive, huge, trained cadres of soldiers to resist the Israelites should ever they come to try to fulfill that, right? For 400 years, he built that up. That's a long time, you guys. That's a long time when you have the when you're the prince of the power of the air. You got a lot of resources at your disposal to build that up. When you got immortals of intelligence, you know, and this is what he did. He devoted himself and those resources to try to build that up. He built it up with the iniquity force. Like they were sacrificing their children into the walls of Jericho. Like they were sacrificing their children into there to to create that iniquity force, to literally make a hedge of protection against the Israelites. But he literally built it back up. To resist them, like everything they designed to try to be their the downfall of the enemy, like the father literally turned it on their own heads. But like this is what's happening right now. We are we are still able to get the witness out. Like it says in second, this is in uh, Second Corinthians chapter four. He says, therefore, having this service, even as we received compassion, we do not lose heart, but have renounced the secret ways of shame, not walking in craftiness, or falsifying the word of Elohim. But by the manifestation of the truth, recommending ourselves to every human conscience in the sight of Elohim. And if indeed our good news has been veiled, it has been veiled in those who are perishing, in whom the mighty one, God of this age, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that the enlightening of the good news of the esteem of the Messiah, who is the likeness of Elohim, does not shine on them. That's who we're wrestling against. We're wrestling against the great deceiver. The one who's dazzling the world, distracting, I love how you said that, distracting us, filling up our plates with all kinds of other things to keep us from these messages, you know, and like he has blinded the minds of these people. He has literally tricked them, and deceived them and put scales over their eyes, like the dragon scales that fell off of Saul's eyes when he had his power encounter with them. Like these scales come off of people's eyes and say, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of Elohim, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to proclaim that word because that's our weapon that we use to fight against that great deception. Yes, and uh, I think the devil's trying to mess up our, our mic connections. <laughs> it's, it was cutting in and Can out a little bit me? there. I could hear you. It's just cutting in and out, but it's it's all right. I think that the audience got it, but 
we're we're coming up on the time that we like to end anyways um try to try to plug that try to get mess with the plug again like you did before because you had it you had it work really good but uh everybody that's listening we appreciate it jason um any last words bro for the audience Stay, right, stay safe out there with your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Keep your your hearts guarded and keep your mind sober. So hmm. watch and watch your back, dude. Watch your six. Get someone to watch your six so you can watch your front. Because this is getting <laughs> this is getting down to the nitty-gritty, guys. So hopefully that uh Hopefully you guys are everyone's prepared, you know, for this because I feel like this next few these next few months and maybe this next this 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 year it's gonna get it's gonna get weirder and weirder. The birth pains are gonna get harder and harder. Everybody's gonna wonder why what's going on. And I hope I, I just I just hope there's a big huge revival to where just people start coming toward, back towards the Lord. But it doesn't look like that's gonna happen right now. So yep, we could just pray for it. Yeah. Let's get ready. I mean, I'm not afraid of that. I mean, like that I'm just. I'm just hoping full that my kids and everybody can uh you know be prepared. Be prepared as well. Cause uh we got some little ones in this in this family, and so do you, Josh. So and so does Nathan. Jeez, he's got he's got some Yeah, you too. So yeah. yeah. It's, it's just... <laughs> We're all in the same boat here, man. So yeah, all right, yeah. Nathan. Any last words for the audience? Man, I just I just really want to say thank you guys so much for for cultivating a platform where we can talk about the word so blatantly for those of you that that have are sitting on the fence and, and wondering about a lot of this i just encourage you to study the word for yourself find out what it is if these words be true or not you know like we're sitting here because we've tested these things it's not i i bet my entire life on on the the god of abraham isaac and jacob still being true and living and active and that we could put our faith and our trust in him and like because of that my family is alive i published my book and my testimony seven years ago you know and here we are as a living witness i have four children that are the first generations born free from generational iniquity, people that have been worshiping this dragon for that for hundreds of years, you know, and and here you can make a change. You can make it, you can be the generational curse breaker. You can end the alcoholism in your family. You can end the abuse in your family. You can end the addictions in your family. Like that comes from this book. That's why it's a living book because it can transform you from the old man into the new one, the person you really wanted to be, the person you were made to be. And I have found that to be true. These guys who are sitting here, their lives have been transformed because of it too. And you know what? We believe that that it can truly make a difference in your life. And no matter what level of depravity and darkness and, and evil, evil that you've been a part of or you've ever had happen to you, you can find healing. You can find restoration. You can find what the enemy intended for evil, Yahuwah intended for good and the saving of many lives. You know, that's, that can be your story. That can be your transformational moment. And even if you're in the pit of it right now and you're struggling and you're on the bus of the struggle bus, man, please just take, borrow our courage for a minute and understand it gets better. It gets better. And you know what, though, though he might've afflicted you for a season in your life and you may have suffered the scourge of this world, understand it's well worth it because we have new families. I have new friends and a new community and a new life that, that is better than anything the devil ever promised me. That was anything better than a blood money empire could have ever given to me. And you know what, I have, I have given up my life for the sake of saving my soul. And you know what, that's really the beautiful story that's found in the gospel of every one of us that's come out of the kingdom of darkness and is racing into the kingdom of light amen and uh one that the enemy hates is luke 10 19 it says behold i have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you we got to understand guys um we have the power through you know we have the power through god we just have to know how to use it but like i said it's like Oh, we have we have a lot on our plates on a day to day basis, but you know I could wake up in the morning and work out at four thirty, and you know my body's so important to me. You know I got to work out, I got to run, I got to do this. But you know what's the most important? You know is to get spiritually strong. You know as I get physically physically strong, you know what's truly important is to get spiritually strong, and that's the most important. God wants to mold us to have us be ready for heaven. What what is he? What do we have in heaven? No sin. So what do you got to get? Just like me and Nathan and Jason were talking about, we got to just work on our discipline and our obedience. And we got to work work on, on the wor- the worst thing that could ever happen is if you make it to the those pearly gates and Jesus says, I never knew you. That should put chills up and down your spine. You never want that to happen. And what do you do? You just make sure that if 
you, you know, Jesus is the word, right? So you got to learn the word. Jesus is the word, right? He is the way, the truth, the life, but he is the word. So you got to learn the Bible and you got to be ready for, to be able to use it in certain moments, but you got to understand because as you learn the Bible, we're going to learn our authority and what we truly have. And I think it's just a blessing. I think this podcast, bro, this is like all like not even planned or scripted or anything. And it just came together. Perfect. It was beautiful. God was working through us and you know, amen to that. Thank you, God. But as we always do, we like to end this in prayer. So let, we'll go ahead and do that. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you giving us this time. We appreciate you introducing us to Nathan. We appreciate appreciate you introducing us to Emma so that we can meet Nathan. And, um, you know, and I appreciate uh, you giving us this time. We appreciate you giving us the ability to read the Bible, giving us the ability to have study tools, to study the different words and translations and and I just want to say, Lord, if, if there is some supernatural changes trying to happen to the Bible, the enemy is trying to change these words, please, Lord, just, just give us the, you know, keep us uh, to be able to have these different, you know, Bibles and uh, different uh, interpretations for us to be able to read. So we understand that the, you know, we know that your word is everlasting and um, we know that you, you know, it's the most important for us to study your word and to, and to get to know you. So anybody that's listening right now that like, you know, is on the fence, like Nathan was saying, if they're on the fence, Lord, we just want you to supernaturally, you know, get them to start reading the word and, 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 and getting to know you, you know, most important. And if anybody has any strongholds that's, that's preventing them for being obedient to you, Lord, I just ask that you please take those, break those strongholds in Jesus name in, in Oshua, the Mashiach's name. And we appreciate you God for everything you do for us. And thank you for giving us this platform. We want to pray for Nathan's platform. We want to pray that you put a legion of angels around him, protecting him at all times and keeping him with that authority, keeping him with that fire that he has in him to teach the word of God, you know, and, and also me and Jason, if you could please just keep us in this, in this position to be able to speak, uh, you know, on your behalf, we want to, say we appreciate you using us all as vessels and uh anybody that that's listening i, I just want to say can you please help us to teach as good as we could teach and to preach as good as we could preach to anybody that's listening so thank you god for everything you do we love you in jesus name amen all right everybody that's listening thank you if you could uh I'll have uh, the link below for Nathan's uh, YouTube. Uh, check out. Uh, can you please uh, announce your book and everything and 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 a ways yeah. to get a hold of you, Nathan? You bet. They can go to snatchedfromtheflames.com. I've got my book there, audio version, ebook version. You can name your own price, and I also have the entire recording of the audio scriptures free for download for you guys as well. Um, they can go to YouTube, um, Nathan Reynolds as well. I've got a channel there with 500 videos and stuff over all the years and sharing all these adventures that we have traveling around the country and speaking at different places. And and uh, you bet you guys can go to Rumble as well at the Linen Railroad and TikTok at Snatched from the Flames. So thank you guys so much for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. And guys, please share the podcast. And if you guys have any issues with the audio or any problems, like when you're, when you're listening, just hit me up at Josh Monday underscore podcast. Uh, that way I could fix whatever I can feel. I'm trying to do my best. We record off of zoom and zoom kind of takes the audio and puts it to Spotify and, and, and YouTube. So thank you guys. We love you and appreciate you. God bless you.